Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I built this beautiful 3 inch fiberglass rocket from Composite Warehouse called the Prometheus. It is a split fin design which can be a little bit challenging but I'm going to show you how I went about that. It has an electronics bay so it is suitable for a level 2 attempt and with fiberglass it's really very durable. It comes in these uh, colors, this airframe only has clear on it. So this is the color of the natural body tube. Now you can choose different colors from Composite Warehouse to suit your needs. Uh, this fit and finish on this kit was just top notch. Made it a really great build. So I'm um, looking forward to flying this and we'll fly it here in a few months. But uh, until then, uh, let's stop talking and start building. The first thing I do when I get my kit, whether I'm gonna build it right away or not, is make sure I have all the parts that I'm supposed to have in the kit, like the AV bay lids and the correct amount of fins, and also do I have enough centering rings, because occasionally I like to add another centering ring, but in this case, the kit comes with four of them, which is a generous amount and plenty to assemble this. So make sure you have everything and then make a list of the things you do need. Like, as you can see, there's no hardware with this kit. So the first thing you need to get is a Kevlar cord because you'll need that to start on the booster, one of the first things that we assemble. So make sure you have a Kevlar cord right away and uh, either pick up or order the parts uh, for the hardware that you'll need. The next thing I do after that is check the fin slots and make sure that the fins fit into the slots, that there's an adequate room and clearance to get the fin in there. Now, this particular model, it's a little bit tight. They're a little snug, but not too bad. I've had some where it just takes a lot of work to get the fin slots uh, wide enough to accept the fins, and that, that is a lot of work and rather difficult to do. If you do find a fin slot that's just a little bit tight, you can use a rotary carbide bit like this, or even better yet, a diamond bit, like this little small one here. Uh, works really well. I find the diamond little balls and bits uh, don't grab the fiberglass and don't grab the material nearly as hard so it's easier to draw a steady line with them and control the cut. In this case I think we're in pretty good shape so I'm going to go ahead and get started on the booster. I like to take my Dremel and a grindstone at low speed and soften all the edges on the airframe and on the electronic space especially I give that a fairly good bevel there. That way it won't bind in the airframe but doing that makes this so it's uh, you don't have to worry about cutting yourself because the edges can be very sharp. Now when you do this make sure you go outside wear a pair of gloves and a mask because the fibers are very abrasive and you don't want to get them on you or breathe them. Make sure you do the lids too just assess every part and you can even do the inside to make sure everything's nice and smooth and that way your assembly will go without any problems. After I sanded the motor tube all of it then I cut some notches into the centering rings with this abrasive disc on my Dremel. And that way I could pass the shock cord through the centering rings. And then I put a couple of pieces of masking tape on the motor tube itself and then flooded the area with epoxy and let that set. I'll show you the end of it here. I did tie a knot in the end. I just thought that was a good insurance and it was easy to do. So I make sure I mark where the fins go, and that way I can clean up any epoxy that's in that area. Uh, I always give a little extra room there. I don't make it real tight, so there's a little bit of room to shift back and forth, but make sure you come back and that, clean that up and that that area is clear right there. I use the Dremel to clean it up, or you can use a uh, Q-tip dipped in alcohol while you're working if you want to do that. But make sure you double check that because the fin root has to set flat against the motor tube in order for it to uh, seal on there properly and adhere to it properly. So this is about ready to go. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the centering rings are all glued on on both sides or epoxied I should say. And so the next step is to prepare the airframe. Make sure everything's washed with soap and water before you glue anything together. Okay, let's take a look at what I did to the airframe. I drilled some holes in the airframe to allow me to inject some epoxy. And what I did is I took this syringe and uh, I trimmed the end, edge off of it. I'll show you a, a syringe without the edge trimmed off of it, but I trimmed that edge so I have a little bit more room to work. And I cut these notches in it, again with the Dremel and carbide bit. 
And so the idea is once the fin is mounted in to just inject additional epoxy in along the fin root. So I'll show you that when I get it set up. I didn't apply any epoxy to the middle centering ring. You just don't need it there. We can come back and apply that when we put the rear fins on. It just makes a mess if you put it in there. I did apply epoxy to the forward centering ring in this area and let the motor mount slide up through it and that makes a good seal. It's a tight fit when you first push the motor mount in as it passes the fin slots. I think that's pretty typical and uh, it must have something to do with the manufacturing process. But anyways, that's why you want to let the motor mount set overnight and cure because it takes some force to get it through there. Uh, it's a good idea to probably do a test to make sure it fits fine before you actually put epoxy in the front. I, after I glue in the motor mount, I make sure that I rotate the motor, the airframe every once in a while for the first five or 10 minutes because it will tend to pull towards the bottom. And so by rotating it, it kind of spreads it around just a little bit. When you assemble the motor mount into the airframe, make sure you line up the fin slots with the marks that we put on the motor mount and that you can see them when you look down through it. Tape over any unused injection ports so that way it uh, doesn't run to the bottom of the airframe and leak out the bottom one and make a mess all over the place. I use Bob Smith epoxy and I found out it was just a little bit too thick. Next time I'm going to use either West System, which is kind of expensive, or US Composite epoxy because it saves a little bit of money. I used epoxy clay to fill in the injection ports and that way uh, the epoxy won't uh, slide down inside and sag when I put on the uh, fin fillets. I printed out a template from payloadbay.com so I could line up the fins. I used a piece of cardstock. Uh, foam core works better, but I forgot to pick some up, so I just made that work, and it's, it's fine like that. I brushed on epoxy on the rear centering ring and also on the fins in the middle centering ring with a brush. Now, it's a little tight in there on a three inch model. It just takes a little bit of time, but just take your time and get it in there. And make sure when you inject the fillets or you brush any in that the rocket's orientated like this so the epoxy will flow down into the motor mount area. I used 10 grams on the forward fin set on these two fins, so I injected five grams in each side. And for the back fins, I just mixed up five grams and brushed it all up in there. Then the last step is to put in the rear centering ring and uh, any sort of uh, retainer that you might have set up for it. Well, that's about it for the motor mount assembly. Uh, after that, we'll put in the fin fillets and things will start looking pretty sharp. Well, I'm really happy with the way the project turned out. The graphics are nice on this kit. Uh, I think they look great. The split fin design, uh, I really like that. The uh, decal that's on the front of it uh, was difficult to put on, but well worth it. Looks really nice. I just want to remind you of a couple of things before I go, and that is I'm not going to fly the rocket until spring, so yeah, we're all going to have to wait. And uh, you need to drill a vent hole, a small vent hole in the airframe just below the coupler, and that will keep the pressure equalized as the uh, rocket ascends to Apogee. I put two 256 shear pins in the front of it. You probably can't see them there, but there are two of them to hold on the fiberglass nose cone. Uh, you don't want the nose cone to separate from the airframe when the rocket reaches apogee and the booster blows off. It can kick the nose cone off, so you really want to be careful with that. Use shear pins and then you don't have to worry about it. So one other thing is I'm going to cover the electronics bay in another video so I can spend more time on it and I'm working on that now. So anyways, it's been a really fun build. The uh, split fin design is a little challenging, but uh, with the video, hopefully there's enough there to help you out with that. So I look forward to flying it. Look forward to meeting you again. I'll see you out out the range. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.